Now have Will Coleman joining us in studio, who when I asked, did you watch UConn Purdue last night, he said, did I? What were your thoughts of UConn winning back-to-back -back championships and just demolishing everyone every step of the way? I think it just further proves, you know, <clears throat> they showed last night why they are, or why they have been, why they were the most dominant collegiate basketball team the past two years. I mean, it's just ev everything a coach could dream of out of a basketball team was on display last night from the UConn Huskies. And it was just, it was beautiful to watch. It's such a interesting example of like how to construct a championship team in today's day and age, right? Because you have a total blend. Like you have Tristan Newman, yeah. who's on the second year of his transfer yeah. after coming from ECU. You have a sophomore projected top fill in the blank pick in yeah. Donovan Klingon. You have a freshman one and done in Stefan Castle, another yeah. projected lottery pick. You have Cam Spencer, who is now making a future NBA name that, for himself. He, he won that game. And he's in his fifth year of college basketball. And I think that's such an important piece of it, too, right? Because yeah, we had he's a conversation on his third about that, team. too. He has extended minutes yeah. playing college basketball. And when you have a fifth year guy like that, it adds the veteranship that, yes, this UConn team won last year, but they turned over this roster. And then you finish it off with, uh, um, Caravan, yeah. the other big, the forward, who mm -hmm. sat out his freshman year because he knew it was what was best for the program. Yeah. He came in, and now he's played the last two years for UConn and been an important key component to this team winning back-to-back -back championships. Like, that's it. It's, it's that easy, Will. Hey. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> I, I think it just shows a testament to just, uh, just unselfish basketball, like one team, one goal. And it was evident that every single person wanted to win. And when you got a guy, like you said, a fifth-year senior, you got Cam Spencer, when you got a guy leading the charge like that, you got the oldest guy on the court, I mean, screaming, yelling, diving on the floor, making plays. I mean, I mean, you really don't have a choice but to follow suit because it's like you got a guy like that. It's like, hey, man, look, he playing his butt off. We got, to, we got to roll with him. We can't leave him out there by himself. We got to be with him. We got to roll with him. And, and it just it – just, it showed on the court from – the defensive scheme, just you know how how they how they decided to play defense, how they you know what they did on offense and and the and the weapons too, man. Because it's like, and I know I, I overheard y'all talking about Edie earlier. When you got a guy like that in the paint, you got to find a way to score around him. It makes it a lot easier when you got other guys around Cam who can finish, mm -hmm. who can make plays, who can make decisions. So it kind of puts. Edie in a, in, a, in a thinking match, a chess match, because do I go help or do I stay for the dump off? I mean, there's so many things and so many mind games that went on that Edie had to make a decision on, and he just – he just couldn't get there because of the playmaking ability from Cam Spencer and the rest of the guys on that team. Step slow. Just a, a step slow. Where you're just yelling. You're like, you're the tallest guy. Yeah, Contest. Yeah, Contest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, I mean, it's like – and Cam – you know, just – we talk about a lot on this show, but, you know, Cam, he wasn't like your typical Caucasian basketball player. He's kind of athletic. He can move. So even the ability to have the hang time and float around and make plays around Edie was something spectacular to see because it's almost like as a big man, and I'm saying, you know, speaking for myself, as a big man, it's almost like a chess match when you're in the air. It's, or it's like you're playing chicken because when you jump, who's ever the most athletic obviously helps, but it's almost like whoever makes the first move because if a guard's coming, you always, you, you almost got to wait and see what he's about to do with the ball before you decide to try and make a block attempt. And if I swing first before the guard makes a move, nine times out of 10, it's either going to be a foul or an and one. Mm. So it's kind of tough and Edie's just long, not very athletic. He's just long. So, if you got a guard athletic enough to wait and kind of see what Edie's going to do, I mean, that's, you know, butter rolls all day around yeah. Edie, and it's just, it's, it's the most frustrating thing as a big man. What did you, as a former big man at the collegiate level, what did you think about the big matchup between Klingon and Edie? And then second question, which one would you have rather had to guard? Edie. Okay. Yeah. Just you, think, you think you can keep him off the block? I have a better shot at, because he's not as, as mobile, but he's I mean, so big and he, he gets is. to his spot so like readily. I, yeah, I know, man. And he's got because you by like eight, go. eight inches. He's got yeah. you by eight inches. And, and nah. I, I'm still a little athletic, so it's like I play. I've been an undersized five my whole life, so just 
it's tiring because you constantly have to move. You know, you can't sit behind them. You got to move. You got a three-quarter. You got a front. You just always have to move because it's almost like you're defending the guard, not so much the big because you have to be able to see. One, you have to be able to see around Edie, but two, you have to be able to see. You have to keep the guard on his toes because if the guard thinks he has a passing lane, you have to be able to get there to take it away. Now, I know he could just throw it over the top, but, like, I'd rather fight my fight with Edie than 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 my guy from UConn. Clinging. So what did you think of the matchup? Did you enjoy watching that? I Who enjoyed watching it. it. Um, I, I figured it'd be a mismatch just because, you know, UConn, just, everybody's just mobile on mm-hmm. the forefront. Everybody's just, it's just mismatches all over the place. Their guards are so big and athletic, too. Oh, my gosh, man. Otherwise. Everybody was just, they were just truly unguardable. Purdue is a great team, right? Yeah. Like, not taking away from that. They were just a team that was great enough to beat everyone except for UConn. Yeah. And that's just a testament to how well UConn was constructed. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, it, it just – it was just perfect, Baz. I know there's no such thing as perfect, but, it, I mean, it was pretty, pretty, pretty damn close just because Dan Hurley was able to sit down with his personnel – and take his team, and I know we talked about this like with Memphis, being able to, you know, those guys probably went to Dan, hey, we love you, we riding with you, we rocking with you, let's win another one. He was able to take those guys and go out into the transfer portal and strategically find pieces that would fit his program that would be okay with playing their role and 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 competing to win another national championship. And it was just, again, it's just, it's just beautiful to see. I, I don't understand. You have to be pretty damn good to do something like that. And or either be really lucky. Yeah. No, they're they're pretty damn good. And it's it's so interesting from a standpoint of like last year, the because we do this, we have to have narratives to talk about going into things. And it was, is UConn really a blue blood? And now it's like, oh hell yeah, of course yeah. UConn's a blue blood. Yeah. They've won six championships in the last twenty five years. Yeah. They're a dynasty. Mm-hmm. And could could Dan Hurley put this UConn team in a position, yes, they'll lose another handful of players to the NBA. Could they be in a position to compete and win? Three in a row. And you're at least going to talk yourself into it because you've seen Dan Hurley do it two years in a row. And at least as of last night, he turned down any thought of the Kentucky job. And he had a very funny quote about his wife saying, you know, I already took her from Rhode Island to stores, Connecticut. If I had to make her do another move, we just got I just started making money. It's too early to get a divorce. Typical Dan Hurley stuff. But he's in such a, a comfortable place. Yeah, in why, UConn. why rock why, the boat? Why would you leave? Why, why? The Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt, live every weekday at 8 a.m.